Retracting now the orbiter access arm, which the crew uses for access. In uh, an emergency, that can be moved back in around the orbiter in about 15 seconds, if that's necessary. Next event will come at six minutes when the orbiter test conductor will give pilot Brian Duffy a go to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start procedure. He'll set the switches in the cockpit to put the APUs in the ready-to-start configuration, which... Here the APUs. Start to record by the clock. Here the copy. The uh, APUs uh, start at uh, five minutes. That's the last critical point at which we can hold if we need to at T minus five minutes and be able to sit there for any duration of time. TLP OTC. Go ahead, OTC. Perform APU pre start. T minus six minutes and counting. Start, and RTC PLT, pre starts complete. We've got uh, two gray top backs and one barber pole as expected on number two. Copy that. APU to copy. And Duffy reporting the configuration of those auxiliary power units. Those APUs will be given a command to start at T minus five minutes in about 20 seconds. Orbiter flight recorders as reported are operating. T-minus five. TLS go for orbiter APU start. TLP OTC. Go ahead, OTC. At this time, perform APU start. Roger, APU start and work. And pilot. Go ahead, OTC. Would you reconfigure heaters, please? Set to work. Charlie Bolden asking, being asked to reconfigure the orbiter heaters for launch. Brian Pilot Brian Duffy is flipping three switches in the cockpit to start each of the APUs, and he'll report when that uh, activation is complete. OTC PLT, APU pre uh, start is complete. Three good ones, and the heaters are reconfigured. OTC copy. Hydrazine uh, now flowing from the tanks toward the APUs. Stand by for final range safety checks. Let's go for third sequence four. Final check now of the orbiter's flight control elements. Standing by for gimbling the three main engines. Rudder elevons and speed brakes all have moved through a program test pattern and they are verified ready to go. T minus three minutes, standing by to gimbal the main engines. Main engines are now in the start position. Starting now to pressurize the liquid oxygen tank on the external tank. Atlantis now on internal power. Atlantis being powered by its onboard fuel cells. PLPOTC. 
retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood now underway. No unexpected errors. Roger, that's in work. Pilot Brian Duffy reports that the action to clear the caution and warming memory system is now in work. He'll be reporting back. The caution and warning's clear and no new messages. That action reporting complete. No surprises there. Close and lock your visors. Yeah, yeah, don't you see? Good luck and Godspeed, Atlanta. Yeah, All right, thank for... you guys very much. We're, uh... Let's go for ETLH2 Replenishment of liquid oxygen to the external tank is now being terminated. The One minute, 30 seconds. At T minus 31 seconds, we'll have the handoff from the ground launch sequencer to Atlantis's onboard computers. The space shuttle has now been disconnected from all ground propellant loading systems. T-minus one minute and counting. Ground launch sequencer verifying that the main engines are ready for ignition. The heaters around the joints of the solid rocket boosters are being turned off. Residual hydrogen burn igniters have now been armed. They'll be fired at T-minus 10 seconds to burn off any residual hydrogen under the main engine nozzles. Sound suppression water system is being armed. T-minus 35, standing by for the handoff. T minus 31, the handoff is complete. Onboard Atlantis computers now controlling. The booster hydraulic units have been started, and the final steering check of the engine nozzles is underway. T minus 20. Body flap and speed brake in the launch condition. Sound suppression water system activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, we're go for main engine start. 6, 5, main engine start. 3, 2, one and liftoff of the space shuttle Atlantis on a mission to planet Earth. Houston Atlantis in the roll. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling. Atlantis is rolling to the proper up sound down position for its climb to a 57 degree inclination, 160 nautical mile high orbit. Three engines now throttling down as Atlantis prepares to pass the air of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Atlantis speed now 500 miles an hour, downrange one nautical mile, altitude 13,600 feet. One minute since liftoff, altitude now 33,000 feet, downrange 3 nautical miles, Atlantis now traveling 1,023 miles an hour. Atlantis Houston, go at throttle up. Roger, John, go at throttle up. Three engines now throttled back up to 104% of rated capacity and operating well, good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems, altitude 68,000 feet, downrange 8 nautical miles. Atlantis now traveling 1,705 miles an hour. One minute 50 seconds since liftoff. Atlantis now traveling 2,386 miles an hour. Flight controller standing by for burnout and separation of the solid rocket motors. Atlantis, two engines, Zaragoza. Copy, John, two engines, Zaragoza, good SRB SEP, good stable team Ecos. 
And Atlantis, we copy. Performance nominal. Copy. Nominal performance. Those calls indicate that uh, Atlantis' first stage performance with the solid rockets was as planned, and Atlantis could now perform a landing at Zaragoza, Spain, on only two engines if that would become necessary. However, three engines still operating well at 104 percent, altitude 225,000 feet, downrange 54 nautical miles, Atlantis traveling 3,400 miles an hour. Time since liftoff, three minutes. 